Jesus explains how a fall happens. Do not play with fire. Stay away from this. May 5th, 2016. Words from Jesus through Sister Claire. Spoken by Jackie. Jesus began. Many of you recognized things planted in your hearts by the enemy, and you've turned your course around. With you, I am well pleased. You have learned and taken to heart a great deal in a very short time. So now you know yourself and your enemy better and better. What I have for you next is another layer of blessings. It's time to move on and live in my blessings until I come for you. Some of you have anointings. You can feel them rising up in you. Things to do you've never had the courage to do before. You will be opposed, but ignore the opposition and hold to the inspiration. Protect it like a newborn babe. For surely it is just that full of life and vulnerable to the scorn and contempt of those who prefer to stay where they are and not tackle anything that could result in failure. But the wisdom you have garnered about the operation of the enemy against you is something you need to set in concrete and not allow the enemy to steal from your memory. I will bless what you undertake on my behalf. Just proceed with caution, knowing that whatever you try to do in my name, the fruit will be copious, and so will the opposition. Ignore it and follow the sweet anointing in your heart. There are some who will not listen to this message, and for them it is the beginning of the decline of their souls and some will never recover. They had such sweetness in my presence here, Claire. They were truly making progress in their relationship with me. Each day they were growing in holiness and awareness of their sins. But now they have turned a deaf ear to me and to this channel and are stubbornly pursuing their rancor under the guise of crusading for the truth. Oh, how I weep for these. Their souls are in decline. Some of them will never recover. Yes, some of them will pay the ultimate price. If the devils could not get them to sin in the flesh, since they could not entice them in this way, in order to retaliate against me for this channel, they are falling through arrogance and pride and taking as many with them as they can. They have lost all sense of conviction and holy wisdom. They are blinded by bitterness and pride, unable to see the gifts I have placed before them. Having lost recollection of their progress on this channel, they are sliding back into their old ways and have lost sight of me in their lives. To them I was but a phantom, a deception who never existed. My overtures of love have been scorned now and replaced with bitterness, envy and pride. Oh, how I lament for these who have slipped through my fingers. Pray for them, dear ones, pray for their salvation, for the judgment they passed on this channel has become their own before the courts of heaven. Yet never will I abandon them. But do you understand? I offered them the choice fruits of my kingdom, my love, my fellowship, my very heart. And now all of that has been swept away and concealed under a carpet of bitterness, woven with beguiling threats of self-righteousness, envy, pride and arrogance. My heart aches for them, and all I showered upon them will now go to other souls who have me in their midst, souls 
that will respond to my tender invitations to grow in holiness as I lead them hand in hand. Yet I lament over the darkness that has settled over so many, having lost their connection with me. They now are the ones falling under the spell of beguiling spirits of self-righteousness, religious spirits who applaud them for their valor in coming against me and denouncing you. This is the lot of those who refuse to seek me until they find me, the lot of those who spurn humility and meekness and seek to rise above others in stature. This is the lot of those who stop short in prayer and receive the deceptions of men offered to them, that they might be knights taking down an evildoer, rather than pressing in fighting the good fight and recognizing their own error, bitterness and jealousy. My children, do not abandon the daunting task of discernment ever. Your very soul rests upon this knowledge and ability to recognize good from evil. Once you lose that, you are like a pilot in the fog who cannot tell up from down who cannot get his bearings and eventually crashes to the ground. You can never afford to trade opinion for this sermon, never. Please let it be a lesson written in my blood. Never choose opinion over a heart-wrenching prayer and discernment. The days of the dry wood are approaching and the campaigns for replacing good with evil have already begun. Many who thought they were impervious to deception are even now approaching them closely, without recognizing they are in danger. Satan will use the weakest parts of their character to lure them in. For many it is financial security, for others popularity and solidarity. They did not recognize rancor in their spirits at the very onset. Rather, they toyed with evil and listened to lies. Soon those lies took root and they became disseminators of deception. Evil fed their sense of importance and self-righteousness and they began to throw off the feathers of deep, persevering prayer in favor of the accolades in defaming the innocent. The devils around them rejoiced and they felt high and important. This only spurned them on to greater and greater columnists. Now they have thrown off all feathers of decency and run with the demons that incited them, collecting more and more arguments for their errors. My children, never ever throw off prayer and discernment for the opinion of men or demons. Do not respond to rancor and never throw your lot in with evildoers. Never trade the mansion in heaven for a place in the furnace prepared for the devils. Never be lazy in prayer and discernment. Understand your very salvation can be put at risk by coming under the yoke of calumny and gossip. Now I will explain to you how it is with those Christians who lose their salvation. They are like the seed thrown on the rocky soil. At first they receive the message with joy, but when the honeymoon wears off, and they are called to holiness of life. They balk. Satan watches for these. The crows come and snatch up the sprout and devour it. I offered them love, but they disdained the discipline of the Lord. They saw the great price involved in loving others and conquering their sin nature and putting on my meekness. This was too great of a price to pay. Secretly, they congratulated themselves that they were okay and even better and wiser than others. They thought they could toy with evil, 
slander and lies, and remain unmoved. In the meantime, the devils fed them with the most clever and logical arguments, shredding their faith in my simple goodness to pieces. I never knew them in the sense that they did not lay their lives down once and for all at my feet and allow me to surgically remove sin from their lives. They were invited into the depth, but they never persevered until they truly knew me and my goodness. They were double-minded, clinging to their intellect and questioning those things that resonated deeply in their souls. Rather than accepting like a little child, they cut it open with their intellect and lost their innocent faith. Yes, the devils are clever, especially for those who are holding back from me and not dying to themselves once and for all. There are others that have been innocent but deceived. Their only fault was that they opened themselves to poison. They knew it was evil, but they listened anyway. My spirit warned them, but they ignored the warning. Very much like you do, Claire, when you want to watch different teachers and prophets. They felt the uncleanness of strife and rancor, but for the sake of entertainment and perhaps learning something, they listened anyway. I warned them, many of these souls were here when I went on an extended campaign to warn them against gossip and slander. I will tell you this, many very clever demons have been assigned to assassinate your character. Many extremely skilled theologian, Pharisee and religious spirit demons have undertaken this endeavor for the enemy who has offered them rewards for each soul, they divest of the intimate relationship they once had with me. So there you have it, the very sad truth and how the dynamics of the enemy have succeeded with souls that lent their ear to what I warned them to stay away from. There is tremendous power in words. That is why I have prevented you from reading their posts. I do not want your faith in me weakened in any way. As long as you obey, Claire, you will do well. But if you get curious, you will pay the price of agony and injury to your heart. Please obey me in this. Stay away from slander and evil speaking. When you do come across a post that begins to detract, delete it immediately. Do not entertain it or try to reason your way through to them. You cannot reason with a demon. They will always find the hole in your armor and stab you where it hurts the most. Rather, lift that shield of faith and cut the wicked head off before it reaches your heart. Now I've brought many new brothers and sisters to this channel. And in this teaching, I'm advising you, do not suppose you can play with fire and come away without being burned. You have discerned that I'm truly on this channel. Do not go probing around in the garbage out of curiosity. Follow your heart and your discernment. Do not allow yourself the liberty of engaging in curiosity. Protect your relationship with me. I've begun the good work in you. And if you are faithful and obedient, I will complete it. You have a choice. Choose wisely. I bless you now with the grace to recognize evil and cut it off before it takes root in your heart.